right, welcome to another fantastic episode of Movie Night Autopsy. I'm looking super forward to this one. I'm super excited. I'm Chad. I'm Grace. I'm Asher. And I'm Sam. And that's the crew. And we're talking about movie and our movie night. We believe everyone should get together and have a movie night. It's a load of fun. We then have a fantastic conversation. A few beers are having. And even if you don't watch a movie, you know, it's just you just get together and do something. Just get together and do something. Like wrap a bank. Or plan a murder. Okay. And then you drink some, <laughs> then drink some beer and talk about it. And talk about it. That's pretty much what we do. Make a podcast. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, how has all your evenings been now that you know how ours is going? <laughs> it's going swell. Anyhow, we're drinking Torpedo Extra IPA. Oh, yeah. From this our this one's good. Sierra Nevada. Our good, good friends out west. Sierra Nevada. This Big is, fan. Yeah. This is one of those reliable beers that you just know what's going to happen. It was the first IPA someone handed me, and I went, Oh man, I need a minute. Aaron is a big fan of these beers, mm-hmm. um, and and that's kind of how I got introduced to them. And man, like these are like what is it, eight point two something like that? Yeah, they're not they're not light. They're not light. Sixty five uh, IBU. Yeah, this thing doesn't play around. Yeah, this it's, it's, it's a good nap beer right if, there. If you're you know, a nap head. Beer. A nap beer. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, one of those where you drink one and take a nap. Yeah, if you've been, if you're a hop head, it's a it's a damn good one. If you're a hop head, you probably have definitely had the torpedo oh, oh before, for sure. so you know it's an extra IPA. Oh for sure. You know how you you drink an IPA and you're like, Man, I just had a little extra. Yeah, like like well you you go through that phase when you're first getting into IPAs, at least I did, where it's like you had like one of the more uh one of the more mellow IPAs and you're thinking like, Oh yeah, this is good. Then you hear about arrogant bastard and you're like, Well I gotta try that. And you're like, I can handle this. And then you hear that double bastards a thing where they literally just do. And, this, and then you just, you escalate from there. And if you go down that road, you're definitely going to eventually find some torpedo. And at any day now, I'm expecting Terrapin to make the, go, or the like, hop go fuck yourself. And it's just going to be the. Uh, they make hop oh, everything man. else. Yeah, it's like the hop executioner. It, you it know? would, be, it would yeah. be like a hop executioner, but dominatrix style with like a big old strap on. Now Sam gave Grace this uh, really this you know this beer for her birthday. I actually think Chad gave me the same beer for my birthday because we ended I up went with two into of the them. store and I and my goal was to find the highest P of all the A's, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I found. I think it's the the was the Ten Hop Gun Grace. I think it was called Ten Hop was definitely part of the title, but we like... shared it and it was a whole lot of beer. It's. So it was like what ten percent and delicious, like over ten percent. Yeah, well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. But yeah, that was my goal is to find the most IPA IPA that they had, and that's what I found. I still have the beer you gave me for my birthday, which was the IPA aged in bourbon. No, barrels. no, it's, it's just a, it's a classic. It's, just, it's, a, it's oh. like a traditional pale style. Okay, ale, but it was aged in bourbon barrels. Gotcha. And that's the part that stood I'm, out to me. I haven't drank it yet. Part of me thinks I'm waiting for like a better excuse, like a nicer occasion. But also, maybe like a I'm promotion at work. Yeah. Recording Maybe a that. podcast with friends. Recording a podcast with friends. Sure. That's uh, you trying to get some. Uh, no, no. Look at what you're trying to no, no, I am this, a selfless, no. altruistic yeah. and, and you know what? individual. I, I support I support Asher's I, selfless now, altruism, I don't and think, I think it's a good idea. We should definitely do this. See? Okay. We're just we're just fighting for the good of all mankind over here. No, I'm selfishly jumping on your thing so I can get some of his beer. Uh. So our biggest rule for movie night is usually at least one person in our group hasn't seen the movie. That way it's new for somebody. And we do it for different reasons. It's a lot of fun. You kind of watch thing. someone watch the movie. But I feel like this is one of the first movies well i'm pretty i'm pretty sure none of us have seen it i had seen it you I had was, seen it i was okay. the one who recommended that okay. we see it at some point and then i think you found a copy of it somewhere down the line yes and then it just came up like oh i have a copy of that yeah i think we're just gonna watch that this week yeah i could like oh could, cool yeah and um so without any further ado has everyone calmed down from duel well, you know, I've, I, you know, I definitely won't drive in front of or behind trucks right now. <laughs> yeah, I just got a thing about passing trucks now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I just like uh, when I see one, I basically just pull over and <laughs> get out of my car, and I just go for a walk, and I come back, and the truck is usually gone. I Hopefully, stop into gone. a diner, I slap a sandwich out of somebody's hand, and I go about going about my day, <laughs> <laughs> getting ahead of ourselves. But that's pretty funny. Yeah, it's it. This one's impressive. It was, it gets a lot of credit. Now it's not S- Steven Spielberg's first movie, but it's the first Steven Spielberg movie, and I mean Spielberg, like capital S, made capital for TV. T, 
Made for TV. First Steven Spielberg movie. Capital S, capital T, capital even Spielberg. It's just big <laughs> and loud and perfectly timed everything. <sighs> okay, I need a minute. That's... You can see definitely a talented director in in action. You know, and you got to remember. I guess when Duel Duel is pre jaw so like Steven Spielberg. You were watching this on TV. You wouldn't mm-hmm. know Steven Spielberg from anyone else. No, You'd just yeah, be, be like, oh, here's a movie anything. on TV. It, it's another movie that's on like Friday or Saturday night or whenever they did TV movies back in the seventies. I don't know. There was three channels and things were crazy. Mm-hmm. I don't know when they did TV movies back then. Nixon was president. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. There was all yeah. kinds of things. We could never relate to those times. I now know. I know. <laughs> now, but it was it was they they did a theatrical version, right? They, yeah, so they added they they um they changed the aspect ratio so they could put it in theaters. Yes, and it was the TV movie was seventy one minutes, and to be able to release in theaters, they had to make it ninety minutes. So Spielberg added a few additional scenes, mainly the intro, um, and a few other like high intense scenes. The guy driving through the city. Yeah, he's like on the interstate, backing out of his house. And like with that super low shot. But who can relate to that? <laughs> Not me, I tell you. I work from home. I mean, pulling out of a garage. You know. <laughs> who has garages? Who has garages? <laughs> what? But anyhow, a cool point about the, the footage that was added, and I guess bleeds into when the movie actually starts. Well, Grace, was it, Grace, you recognize the, the roads. Oh, yeah. I was just there this past June. I flew into She's LAX. a huge Duel fan, so she flies to where <laughs> I've got to be filmed. where it happened, <laughs> folks. She pissed off a semi-truck driver while she was there just to... He doesn't get it, but the, he doesn't the, have to. Yeah, the, the guy didn't bite, though. He kind of just got pissed off about it and left her alone, but she, she tried. Anyways, I flew into LAX, and I was on my way to Porterville, but the way you get there is to head towards Bloomington and take that route on I-5, so that was cool being there, um, being where where parts of where they shot the movie, and just seeing the scenery and feeling that feeling, and it was kind of cool because on the way there, I did see an angry truck driver, um, and he there was a car that was passing him. And he, he didn't give them a lot of time to come through. And all, all this while, I was in the car with my friend. And so, so it sounds like California just has a problem. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think they have a truck problem. And <laughs> my friend is right. an angry truck all the, driving truck. All the politics not coming out of California right now. <laughs> no, Why are we hearing truck. about not, the truck not, driving problem? Not a lack of water. Yeah. <laughs> it was the truck drivers. I knew it was them. Even when it was the fires, I knew it was the... I tell you, this problem's been going on since 1971, man. We gotta do something about it. That's why their taxes are so high. It's the damn truck I mean, tax. They made, a movie, they made a movie about it. So onward with the movie about high taxes. So, sorry, for, so we're, we're I... We're uh, gonna get there. We're gonna get to it. I hope so. <laughs> so our hero, Dennis Weaver, who was a TV actor of the time, been in a few movies. I can't name any of them. I apologize. I did not do my homework. Um, he's on like a business trip call type thing. Like he's got an appointment, I assume, around Bakersfield, and he encounters this giant 16-wheeler truck that just looks like the devil as a truck. It looks like a tame faction in a Mad Max movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're halfway through like making it crazy looking. They're just kind of figuring it out. Yeah, Sam said while we were watching it, he's like, if I saw the truck in Fury Road, you know, you would you would not do a double take. You'd be like, oh, no. yeah, that's a, that's a post-apocalyptic yeah. truck. They, that's, it's just a gang with restraint. Yep. Yeah. So uh, our, our hero encounters the truck on the road, and he gets behind him. He's, he, follow, he gets behind him. And then he he tries to pass him, and then they do a back. Well, and well, he over, just right? does he pass just him. Passes he just him passes like him, but then pass. the one time, but then the truck, the but time. then the truck then like makes it a point to pass him back. Says yeah. says, oh well, I'll show you, little red car. I'm a big old semi truck, and that's a recurring motif in the movie too. Is just like how 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 big this semi truck is in comparison to his car. It's and it's just it's a nice car. It's, yeah, like it's a, a, Plymouth, nice, it's a, Ford, nice a car. Plymouth Valiant, I believe it was a car. Nineteen seventy Plymouth Valiant. <laughs> And it's like cherry red. It's beautiful. It looked really it's, good. It's beautiful, and they fucked that shit up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. Does he? And now, I know, do they pass each other a few times, or is it just the one time before they get to the gas station? I think station? it's a few no, they, times. They, they, it's they, a play, few. they play the game a little bit. They play the game. And then, like... like uh, He gets to the gas station first. Yeah. And, and then, gets, and, and well, one of the one of the times the after the semi-truck passes him, the semi-truck then 
like kind of starts like swerves around the road, keeps him from being able to pass the semi truck, and mm-hmm. but and then he he passes him again. Well, at some point, the semi truck like just says, "Okay, I'm I'm sorry, bud. I'm sorry. You go ahead and pass me." And then he waves him into like a car coming. I thought yeah. that's post that's a, gas station. That's after the gas station. Yeah, that's is that post. after the gas station. Because that's the first time the truck driver does something that could have easily gotten him killed, and it's yeah. like the first. That's like the moment that's, the movie gets real. That's the next up. That's like so. I think the thing with just the pass back and forth might have been added later. I do know that like the thing at the gas station of all the character development between Dennis Weaver and the truck, and the truck driver, <laughs> and the truck who I refer to. The it, truck is a character. The truck is the character, and it's kind of a hybrid character. The truck and the truck. They are one. Yeah, they are one. It's the you, you, you never stuff. see the truck driver. And then there's like this: the guy makes a phone call to his uh, wife. Allegedly, you see him in the in, in the yeah. diner scene, but supposedly, but you, you, the, your paranoia gets the best of you. That's, that's the point. It's so yeah. good. But uh, but anyways, the call to the wife. Call to the wife. Uh, he has problems at home. A disagreement with his wife. So you get a little bit into like like how his life's going at the moment. He is He's not, not thrilled. He's like not, a buddy of his is always hitting on him or something. Yeah, uh, no, uh, dude, it gets real. The, the dialogue in that it, she specifically says, you know, you can tell there's tension on the phone. Like he's he's kind of like treading lightly, and you can tell she's not very happy. And yeah. he's like, I can tell something's wrong. And she's like, Oh, you know. And he's like, Oh, he starts with this. He's like, I expect you to just roll up my sleeves and go get in a fest fight with so and so. He mentions some guy, and she's like, Well, you know, well you basically did nothing. He was practically raping me at the party the other day. She used That's, the word rape. You, yeah. Oh wow! And then, and then, yeah, I then, forgot and about then that. the guy responds that. with the words "Oh, honey," as if he just is sick of her shit. Like he, and like I was just to the response, I was almost raped. The, at and that, that in itself is a movie. Yeah. That's his <laughs> own totally different movie. Yeah, we don't get to uh, see that movie. In fact, you can. I pitch... had to Asher woo for a second. I just... <laughs> Well, it's good if you get the ash of And during this scene, in his background, there's a lady doing laundry at their mm-hmm. laundromat because it's a laundry slash gas, st- gas station place. Well, obviously, you've never been to act in <laughs> California. Well, yeah, you do your laundry and get your gas at the same time. And then on the wife's end, she has two little sweet little kids playing with their robot and some other toy. A the- rad robot. Oh, that yeah. robot looked awesome. Yeah, that robot was oh, way man, cooler back than the robot Back in the 70s. We would play with robots in the living room, like just <laughs> that's that's what's going on in that Man. scene, and I kind of love it. Yeah, it's great. It's very, it's very just, much of the time. It's just for like a second, but I kind of yeah. love it. So, uh, Dennis Weaver's character, um, throw away Tom Selleck. Throw away, thank you. Throw away Tom Selleck. Uh, I think that guy. I think that guy, like a week later, becomes the protagonist of Falling Down. Yeah. <laughs> 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 By the way. In <laughs> in this scene, no, in this scene, there is a great uh, example of man spreading that happens. Like he's on the phone in a hallway. There's like a a desk on the other side, like a, a receptionist desk on the other side of the hallway. And he's he in just the right? he just takes his right leg and just puts it on the desk and literally stretches out over an entire hallway while he's on the phone. It is an unnatural and uncomfortable position. You call it man spreading. I call it soliciting. <laughs> That was ridiculous. <laughs> you do that. You do that type of move with intent. If alien, or you're Captain Morgan. If it's alien. one of the two. <laughs> are we are we talking about the laundromat scene? Yeah. Yes. With, with 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 the shot through the through, oh, through the. Oh yeah. Thing. Oh yeah. That was a good that's shot. Good shot. Good shot. So like cool. the shot. The shot doesn't mean anything, but it looks cool. It's good literally shot. like. It's literally. It doesn't add to the story, but it looks cool. No, it just looks neat, and it's yeah. just like what. And that shot, you could not have a like washer dry, washer dryer hybrid thing door open up and shoot through it but he did but he did but he did and it's just it is so cheap no one was there to stop him a piece of glass that's a circle that's it's just taking the bare basics of making better composition and it's perfect okay but here's the thing here's the thing steve uh why (laughs) well well you see this this it's like framing the shot Uh, no i mean i get it i get it but just why why (laughs) Because he wanted, and he just wants to do it. Yeah, just, no, I would feel the same thing. thing. Yeah, the shot will be framed. <laughs> oh, and by the way, this that shot moves so slowly that Chad went and used the bathroom and then came back, <laughs> and oh, he literally yeah. said, "You didn't have to pause it for me." Moments after which he said, "Throw away." Tom Selleck began to move again because he was not paused. That's just a very just slow moving. That was shot. timing. Yeah, oh, that was good. Yeah, it was good. 
Oh God! So anyway, throwaway Tom Selleck. His, his name is Dennis Weaver. It's Dennis Weaver. His name was he does, Dennis That's Weaver. not enough credit to call him throwaway Tom Selleck. He's okay. great in this. He is really good. In this. He weaves a good Dennis. Anyhow, <laughs> now I want to. I want. <laughs> I want to. Oh. I want to throw in before we get into the phone call. I think an important dynamic is that. Dennis Weaver got to the gas station first and got service first. And I, I kind of think oh, that yeah. the truck gets even angrier because he honks at he the honks. service guy. He's like, hey, I'm a big truck. You should serve me first. This truck. The big truck honked? The big truck honked? The big truck honked. And the guy's like, one second, big truck honked. By the way, the, with you. he made him wait. He made him wait. <laughs> The attendant is fantastic. I'm sorry. Um, Sam, are you doing a Seinfeld thing? Yeah, right he's, going, he's, he's going Seinfeld on us. Seinfeld, Seinfeld thing. thing. I just asked. Yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> I, I just like, did I it. I would have helped you. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it was too late for that, Chad. <laughs> so tensions are building. It's too late for this bit. No, yeah, no, it's always yeah. We'll we'll take some Seinfeld bits. We're <laughs> we're not above that. We're not above that. It'll it'll come in handy, I'm sure. Now that oh, sign that Seinfeld bit barged through the door like Kramer. But up up but up up. It's dead now. Let's move on. Okay. All right. By the way, they call gas ethyl in this movie. They call it Ethel. Oh, there's that California. like the worst jerk joke in the world. You mean the the greatest joke ever to be <laughs> yeah. conceived uh, by a living me. organism? Yeah, Are you yeah. Make the same? You, yeah. Made the, you made this joke last night. Are you gonna make it right now? Mm, well, we we need to talk about the movie, right? <laughs> Gotta talk about the one joke. I mean, the we, one joke we, it has. It's like, <laughs> this is the one I'm not, joke. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Not. I'm, I'm not walking into that trap, passion. No, I mean we 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 need to like. <laughs> Yeah, so like I mean, so if I was in a gas station in this movie, I'd go up to the attendant and I'd be like, "Hey, can I can can you as fill it up with ethyl? ethyl? You can you know, fill yeah. it up with ethyl because they don't say gas." And the gas station attendant's response is, "As long as ethyl doesn't mind." Oh my god, it's, it's fucking awful. genius! Masterpiece alert, ladies and gentlemen! Masterpiece alert! Oh you know, god. once I once heard my grandfather tell a story about seeing Lenny Bruce, and that story pales in comparison to watching this movie. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> you know, I didn't think we'd, uh, side, I didn't think we'd do a podcast. Road. That was as long that was just a side you, road. But at this it looks rate, like we're yeah. getting to it. <laughs> okay, so. it sure shit looks like it. So tensions are building. They move so on. They tensions leave the gas station. Building. They leave the gas station, and the movie starts. Like it really starts here. It's a lot of cool. No, uh, it just it just kicks it up a vibe, much. but it just kind of happens. Just, it goes into fourth gear. Yeah. And this is the one where the, our driver meets the truck on the road again, and it's the passing back and forth is much more tense. He swerves around to block him, and then he waves him through. And this is the part you were talking about, Sam. Yeah, he waves him through, and there's like another car coming, and like like he's waving him into oncoming traffic. Yeah, he's like, go ahead and pass, and he can't. He can see around the curb, but at, our driver can't. At that can. point, he's well, yeah, of course, you can't see around this big ass truck. He's a big ass truck, <laughs> and. Like seriously, like that 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 truck is hauling some seventies ass. It's such a big <laughs> ass truck. Such a big ass truck. Seventies <laughs> ass. Seventies ass. God. We'll get into seventies ass later. They're driving, and he and after after the passing incident, he realizes things are gonna are gonna get pretty sinister, right? Because. Have you, 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 what's passing like on the road? When you pass a car, I freak out well, every well, time. Well, he actually put him in harm's way. That's before, what I'm saying. Up to this point, he had just been kind of inconveniencing him. And now he's actually just like, like that could have killed the dude. Or at the very least, you know, hurt him a lot. I mean, a head-on collision on, on a, a highway. And Grace, you said you saw something similar to this when you were in California this past summer? I saw an... A truck driver that that was passing another car but while this was happening i was driving with my friend and he was telling me that this car passed a truck the truck got ang the truck driver was angry uh -huh. and started chasing the car like okay. very close without giving him yeah. a lot of space and the car wanted to exit because was freaked out and there were these like little poles you know that reflector poles the mm -hmm. skinny ones that help you see your way in the dark road and the car went up the ramp and the truck just completely like kind of drove through those little things um, and knocked them down. But anyways, road rage, whether you're a truck driver or a driver of a car, it's real. Okay. So so your friend was telling the story. Yes. And they say it happened to them or someone they knew? It happened to someone he saw on the road. Oh, so that's actually he saw this. Yes. Okay. Because part of me is like, dude, he's just saying, he's just copying scenes from Dune. Yeah, I, I know, and that's yeah. that's why Duel. this came up. I was like, oh my gosh, Gregory, have you seen this movie? It's yeah. called Duel, and I told him about this movie. 
and they told him to watch it. It's yeah. really good. It sounds oh, like, yeah, man. This, I don't, this I don't movie know. put lots of post builders, fence makers, uh, sign people. They, they put a lot of them into in, in, in work. work. Just And it's kind of almost relevant still because I know people get road rage, but you don't actually want to kill the other person. Well, this, this truck driver... I don't know. Don't people so have all sorts don't of ranges so sure. in that get, spectrum. People mm-hmm. get pissed off about ridiculous things and make really bad decisions. True. Heat of the moment. All right. So it sounds like your friend's story was like pretty close to our movie. So there's something going on on the California highways. It seems pretty ridiculous. So this, I'm trying to remember all the elevation at which like the craziness happens. But definitely after the, the guy, oh yeah, come on through, and he waves him through, and he almost hits something. That's when you start to have a couple more. It raises the things. stakes. They raise the, it raises the stake with like every scene, and there's a lot of. That's what this whole movie raising. is. It's, it's just kind of just stake raising the movie. Just, yeah, like like the stakes keep getting raised, and then we get a little bit of a break whenever they get to the uh, when they get to the diner. Yeah, the well, diner's they, interesting. They yeah, but first there's a. Um, I think we, we have to say to get to the diner, there's kind of a continuous buildup of tension and definitely right before they're there, the truck is definitely messing with him. He's making, he's right behind him. He's making him go really fast. And the reason he ends up in at the diner is he sees a runoff of the road. He sees a bunch of cars parked. He's like, this is my chance because his truck is right behind me. I can like just pull off here real fast and just like stop my car and get away. And that's basically what he does, except the car is very out of control and slams into a white fence, breaking it. Oh, well, if you're watching the movie, I mean, like, why, like how he's never driving the car straight. He's doing this the whole time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sam is using his arms to wave the wheel around. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. That's, that's it's, what, you know, yeah. that's what Mustache Man does in the movie. Dennis yep. Weaver, yeah. It's, it's weird. It really gives you the impression that to deal with a problem on the road, you swerve a lot. Oh, That's yeah. how you deal with oh, the problem. Yeah. It's all over the place. It makes for like a great movie because it, it makes everything work, seem intense. It might work about ten percent of the time when Asher does it in Mario Kart, but it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work in real life. Then it doesn't. Work Red shell movie. fired. Oh, <laughs> we'll settle this later. Oh no! Oh no! That was a green shell. If there ever, ever was one. Uh, yeah. So he kind of almost wrecks g- stopping in this like parking spot across from an old country road diner, and he's just and, and the truck just. Flies through. He just takes off. No one can find Never him. stops. Never, Never stops. stops. After he, he runs him off the road. takes off. Some people come over like, hey, mister, you're all right? And he's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that cause truck. Because he, he crashes into one of many fences. Many fences. They crash into so many fences. They never address who's responsible for fixing the fence. He just kind of breaks a fence. I believe then, I know. Oh, I believe that the help is going to take care of that. Oh, You know who? Man. It was this 1971. You know who's going to build it? California taxpayers. That's right. That's right. They're going to build that wall. Anyhow. So, also, just to also add a little bit of uncomfortable feelings, as the man is like, are you all right? He, the guy's like, I don't know. I think I th- my neck is hurting. And the guy puts his hand around the driver's, Dennis Weaver's that's neck, right. and he's yeah. like, that's whiplash. It's like, ask, please. <laughs> Like, thank you for helping, but can you please ask before you check me for whiplash? He does it, was, it like it twice. It was 1971. There was okay. that's not how people okay. treated each other. Yeah. It, it's I mean, if anything, that guy deserves credit for not just raping him right <laughs> then and there. <laughs> See, that's why the wife just needs to chill out. I don't know what her problem is. Seriously. <laughs> oh man. I mean, here he is going to Bakersfield to try and secure them a better future to buy better robots. I mean, and have <laughs> for the kids, for their children. <laughs> I mean, the on, American goddamn right dream. It's, it's right there, Bakersfield. Come on, man. We built the best robots in the seventies. Exactly. And this was the point we thought it was gonna. The movie was gonna be called Whiplash because uh, the old man kept on saying. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know yeah. what? He kept saying, "You got Whiplash," and I'm like, you know, what's a good name for this movie. Whiplash. whiplash. If only they had used that. I want to hope somebody uses that name one day. One day. Didn't we do a podcast about Whiplash? Yeah, like, we can't like release the, it. F- the first one? Yeah. Okay. What's, uh, it's just bad. Yeah, no, but, um, bonus content later. <laughs> uh-huh. Support us on Patreon. The diner is... Oh, the diner scene is probably, probably the best scene in the movie. Besides just general... Dr- well... That's not that's not fair because it doesn't involve driving whatsoever. I, but it is great. It's like a Kafka esque yeah. study in like an existential paranoia. Like, it's, it's funny. It's like it takes a break. 
the movie takes a break for a second to collect itself, and it, it does it early well, on. It tries but, to take a break, but the like movie the, won't like let the protagonist. There. It tries to take a break, but as the protagonist is there trying to take a break, he's just getting worked up about shit in the diner now. Yeah, it's not the same kind of break you get in Fury Road, which you have, you have, if you haven't listened to that, you should definitely listen to our podcast on Fury Road. But there's a break there in the middle of that movie. It's the only break, and it's definitely more serene because nothing is being worried about at the current moment except what to do later. But in, at the at, well, first of all, we haven't even gotten to why it's a study in paranoia, right? We haven't. Yeah, he's just there. He he walks inside. I I think that like. I believe that whenever he gets in there, he sees the truck pull up. Yeah, he's in there for a minute and he's freaked out. He orders he, a sandwich first. He orders a sandwich. He orders a sandwich and some water. He but he's down. he's there for a minute and he's sitting in a booth by the window. And after he's getting, he calms down a little bit. He looks out the yeah. window and the truck's already parked. And you're outside. and you're hearing some of his narration as he's doing all this. Yeah, too. there's a lot of voiceover of like just paranoid thoughts happening. Mm-hmm. Was it me? Was it him? But Who then, it's, but then at some point he realizes that the semi truck is there now. And there's nobody in the truck, so that means he must have come inside at some point. Well, lots of people have come inside in the past, you know, like five minutes or so. Which, which one could it possibly be? And now he's looking around, and and he doesn't know he doesn't know who it could be. He he's half the people in here are wearing cowboy boots. Yeah, that's that, one of the only things he knows about this guy. Yeah, he's like the only thing he knows about this guy is the truck he drives and the, and that he wears like kind of brownish cowboy boots. Yeah, he hasn't gotten a good look at him. And like. He tr- he looks at like every single person who's wearing cowboy boots. Oh, he's like freaking out and staring down everybody in the place. And it turns out more than half the patrons are wearing similar cowboy boots because it's it's a it's, a, it's a trucker it's a trucker's like like yeah. diner spot. Yeah, like it's one of those. So he's like, it could it's be any one of them. And he mm-hmm. starts to try and figure it out, and he's not good at it. No, he's just freaking out in his booth, like yeah. he's not even eating his food. So he's. Having an inner inner dialogue, and uh, kind of freaking out, and then he goes over to one like particular guy, oh, and man. is like, "Well, he he for oh, some why, why does he think it's this one guy? He he sees he's going around like, oh, is it this guy? Is it this guy? And oh, there's a great shot of him asking each one like, "Hey, Mister, I don't know how he got off on the wrong foot, but no, uh, that's all, yeah, that's let all me buy you a beer. Yeah, yeah, it's all his inner inner dialogue. And when he says that." The oh, shot, yeah. wait, Grace noticed this. Remember the shot? Oh, it was cool because the shot made you feel like he was walking up there. But yeah, yeah it it's, like a, it's like a handheld POV shot. Pretty shaky because it was like 71. They didn't have steady cams then. And it's a made so, for TV movie. What's yeah, it's a made for TV movie. So these dudes are like holding it. Back when that meant looking. something. Yeah, I think the budget was 450. Yeah. 450. What? But that was in 1971. So just for inflation, we're talking maybe nine hundred thousand. Oh, easy. So yeah, it's that shot. It's like that paranoid POV shot. It's perfect. I usually hate handheld shots because they're so shaky, but this one is like the example of the perfect handheld shot because it's just a camera, probably you know, and it's just right there. Oh, that's just under three million dollars for a budget, sir. Ooh, wow. Well, my, okay, okay. My interior inflation calculator is garbage. But it's good to know. Mm-hmm. But it's good to know that the median income is still around thirty-four thousand a year. You and your politics get the hell out of my podcast. <laughs> oh, we're just it's just a side note for context. This is escapist man. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to bring some realism into hey, this dog, and hey, that's not work that way. Hey, with what Grace has told us about California, this movie <laughs> is pretty realistic. I don't think this is escapism, man. Like. <laughs> So he walks up to this dude, just like, just like cold steps up to him. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he's like eating his, his tuna salad sandwich. 70 sandwich. And just sitting there doing his thing. And, and, and he, of course, he's got a beer in front of him because he's a trucker in the 70s. And he's drinking a beer while he's stopped. They all before are. Before he gets yeah, back on the road. Is, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, like Mr. Mustache walks right up to him and just like, like starts like, Getting up in his face. And yeah, he's just he, like, sorry. No, he's just like, buddy, you need help. He does not play it as cool as <laughs> he does in his hypothetical situations yeah. in his mind. Nope. Though he was very polite yeah. in those. He just walked up like, yeah. hey, what's the problem? I'll buy you a beer. His when inner he, dialogue was nice. When he actually does it, he is a dick. Dude, <laughs> his dialogue so just is. Just quit it out. Cut it out. You hear? His dialogue is like, starts at the end. 
<laughs> of that speech. The answer pair to the. He, there's no preamble. There's no explaining the situation. Straight to escalation. Straight to like, uh, like up to like a rating of a nine. And then the guy ten. just tries to brush him off and go back to his sandwich. You know, the man's a, got things to do. He's, he's a hard. The 70s. He's a hard working American man. You he's know? got. He's it's got the got 70s. He has things to do. There's a sandwich. He's got things going on. And of course, you know, uh, Dennis Weaver's best choice of action at that point is to smack the food out of his hand so that he knows that he means business. <laughs> At which point the guy properly wails on just, him for just, a few oh minutes. Yeah. Just, just whoops his him. ass. Just beats his ass. We know why he didn't get into a fist fight with whoever I'm was pretty, yeah. I'm pretty sure that whenever Sonny beats that dude's <laughs> ass in The Godfather, that's the scene that he was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, so he lays the smack down. And then, of course, the rest of the uh, bar intervenes because they can see clearly this is not fair yeah. to let this trucker just yeah. wail on this guy. And it's been ten- yeah, like the, the 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 shopkeep. He runs out and he's just like, "Hey, break it up, break it up!" Mm. And yeah, it's like like seriously, like in true in true like the graduate no, gas station attendant fashion, just actor of the year over <laughs> there, y'all. <laughs> uh, that deserves its own podcast. Uh, oh man, just talking about bad actors in good movies. <laughs> Uh, that, that Ooh. Ooh, that's a good Ooh. one. That would be fun. I just know that's a good he idea. Up, but Podcast he runs idea. Up, he runs up and he's like, "Oh, hey, hey, come on, knock it off, knock it off. I'll buy you a beer. You know, you a sandwich. I'll buy you another sandwich. I'll buy you another sandwich." And then, he, then the guy probably just walks out the door. Yeah, what gets me about this scene is that it's ten minutes of sheer paranoia, which makes it feel like twenty minutes. And we've seen every one of these diners face to face and our our protagonist has had some sort of altercation in his head so the way they react is like anybody would react to that situation objectively but considering you've been in these people's faces for 10 minutes it takes you back to these people care what's going on so much about this fight you assume everyone hates them and everyone's the truck driver well everybody everybody has like noticed that he's just like Glaring people down, sitting over there in the corner by himself. Yeah, just they're probably wondering. At everybody, they're probably wondering what's wrong with this guy. What's he going to do to us? They, they do, they do. Even the, whenever, like, when the shop keeps waving off the guy who's just whooping his ass, he's like, "Hey, could, like, look at the guy whooping can't you, can't his you, ass." Can't you see he's sick? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they feel bad for him. Like, where's Keith David and Roddy Piper when you need them? Oh, and this nice reference, very good. They're probably, they're probably busy having their own fight scene. I'm pretty sure it's not done yet. <laughs> it's never done. So, oh, there's that one guy before that who uh, gets in his, leaves the diner, and he thinks that's the guy because he heads towards the the truck, our our satanic truck that's sitting outside, and you see him walk, and the guy's like, "That's the guy, that's the guy. What's he gonna do?" And then you hear a smaller engine revs up, and that guy l- turns around the truck in a tr- in a pickup truck. He drives from behind, drives away. from behind the satanic. Truck. So there's like a misdirect on that scene. Yeah. It's fantastic. I love it. Speaking of that satanic truck, Maximum Overdrive eat your heart out. I've heard stories of this movie. We are Maximum never Overdrive. heard of it. You haven't seen Maximum Overdrive? Are we nope. watching Maximum we, Overdrive we from the might, podcast? Is it, might is it from to like the, uh, for you to see it. Is it from the Spider-Man universe and they made a movie about it? Uh, yes, but only Spider-Man. Sony Spider-Man. Universe. Ah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, but that's Spider-Man's right. not going to be in it. They actually can't legally can't talk about Spider-Man. <laughs> There's no Spider-Man truck happening but they're at gonna, all. But they're going to write it in a way that leaves the door open so they can shoehorn Spider-Man in later as an afterthought. And doesn't that sound like a, like a fun thing to do? I'm doesn't never like seeing Maximum Overdrive. No maximum overdrive. I can't remember. I can't remember what year it came out, but it was post to the duel for sure. It was like the late eighties, right? Something like that, like late eighties. It was an Emilio Estevez vehicle. <laughs> I didn't do that. On, I did not do that on purpose. Shame. That was not on purpose. Shame. Sam and will now it. sit in and, the corner and, and of and shame. I, I, shit, I shit you not. The movie is about like a like a spooky space cloud that like <laughs> spooky passes, space cloud, <laughs> passes really? over the planet Earth. And it changes, it makes all, all technology, like anything that is like an electronic thing, now has like a mind of its own and wants to kill all humans. So like... Really? So like <laughs> blenders and stoves and fridges and vending machines are all like trying to take people out. Like, and there's... <laughs> And and there's a really good scene with a vending machine taking somebody out like at a, at a Little League game. Um, but the main, but the main antagonist in the movie is this big semi truck that just has like the Spider-Man Green Goblin on the on the on the uh, grill, <laughs> and it's supposed to just be really menacing seeing this Green so Goblin there truck driving around. There actually is a Spider-Man connection. There is a that Spider-Man is connection. I, I, I have a I have a question. 
Guys, Maximum overdrive. You say this cloud comes over Earth and takes over all machines. Yeah, but you don't find that out till the end. Spoilers. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, does this happen at the beginning of the movie, or does this happen well, over time? Here's what happens. You see the events of the movie. And thank you for spoiling it the, for me, sir. The movie ends, and the characters get to their like destination at the end of the movie. They got to the and maximum then overdrive? Right, right before, they, 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 they maximumed overdrove. And then at the, at the very end, before the credits roll, there's like a bit of text that says, as it turns out, a spook of space cloud <laughs> drifted over the planet Earth and caused all the crazy shit that you just saw. And that's the explanation behind it. Have a good day. <laughs> and then the credits roll. So the movie oh, so has bad. text at the end. To explain why explain everything why just happened. Explain why the movie happened. Yeah. Oh. It's like... <laughs> Our, it is. It's, I was going to say, our audio engineer, John, uh, <laughs> has something to say. He says he thinks it's a Stephen King flick, and I, I, I believe it is. I believe it's both written and directed by Stephen King. Did he direct that piece of shit garbage? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it's so bad. It's but we, we might We might have to watch it. Just, we might have to watch oh, it. God. Just well, to watch it. How long was that tangent? For the greater good. 30 minutes? Oh, man, we Maximum did we did tangent so for a So the movie Duel is Wait, a classic on. directed by, I mean, well, starring Tom Selleck and directed by <laughs> Rob Reiner. Okay. Takes place okay, in stop. beautiful Italy. Stop. <laughs> where they race Vespas. <laughs> oh, my God. No, but, but, but honestly, <laughs> honestly, it takes place in the Mojave Desert, um, which, is, which is neat. You find out this whole time that he's been freaking out and trying to analyze every single person in the diner. He sees the truck start up with no one having left except for the person who he saw drive off in a different truck. He sees the satanic truck start up and leave, showing the audience that the driver was never in the diner at any point in time. Or, you know, when he, he was none of the people the guy was checking out and trying to figure out, is like, this the driver? Like there's a guy who's just like pulls up in parking lots and lays down in the truck bed hiding for t several minutes and then he leaves. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, some we don't of those know semis, what he was, he some of those semis have like beds like right behind the driver's seat. Yeah. So they take off and we're back on the road. And this is We're back stuff, on the road. This is where stuff starts to go from like, I, this sucks, but this, uh, this guy... It, this could happen to. This starts getting a little bit supernatural in a weird way. Of what's happening between him and the truck. Supernatural. Because, what do you mean? Yeah, it's just Explain like yourself. It, there's, this truck is so all powerful. It's not it's, all powerful. It's all douche. It's. It's not. It's just so fast and so massive and so intimidating. It's like Bowser well, and Mario Kart. It has a low acceleration, but it has a high top speed. It take. It has this like mythical propulsion about itself. When no, I'm pretty sure that's dude. just physics. Or physics. Physics can be mythical. Chad? They probably were at one Even point. Believe the thing I'm saying. <laughs> I, I get what Chad said. This it's kind of like it's uncanny that the truck always kind of is waiting for him. Like you were yeah. like, okay, because he pulls over and just chills by the side of the road for a while. Well, yeah, because he's like, I'm not going to go back on the road right after this truck leaves. That's without that would be crazy. So he waits for a long time. Is that when he falls asleep and wakes up next to the train? Really uh, no, that's me later. Out. That's this later. Is, I think this is the school bus. Oh, so to oh, me, it was just a train. Bus. Oh yeah. yeah, he has a he has a confrontation with the school bus. So there's like a side of the mountain because there's a tunnel and there's this pull off point with the and school bus and a bunch bus. of kids that I guess would rather just be sitting there with nobody fucking helping them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing to do all day but wait. Those damn those damn entitled pieces of shit. <laughs> Is what and, they were. And a school bus driver, no teachers, no chaperones. Oh, man, that generation No other trouble, adult except the school bus driver um, is broke down, and the guy's trying to get help from our driver. Also, who is this school bus driver guy? Who hired him? And why are they all the way out there? I thought field trip, but what are they going to do? Go look at rocks? Yeah, thousands and thousands of rocks. It's free. You know? Well, anyhow, the, the, truck, the, the school bus is broken down, waves them down. And the guy's like, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey, mister, we're in a real pickle. Maybe you could, like, you know, everyone is just doing Oh, it. yeah. This is a guy who knows that he has a small role in the movie, and he's milking it for every every yeah, second that he's there. he is a friend of someone, and he is trying to break into the business, which he did not, no. regrettably to say. And that did man not. was Harvey Keitel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's a good thing he can solve problems. <laughs> So he tries to get like, hey, mister, give me uh, a bump from your car. If the car gets moving, I'll, I'll turn the engine on because that's how cars work in the 70s. And the guy's <laughs> like, my, my, you're a school bus. My grill's too small. It won't work. So he's like, hey, let's just try it. Because you know how you trust strangers to do things? Let's just try it. 
Let's just do it. And then he gets up on there, and the way that the 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 bumper is built, it's got these little hooks or something at the front of it. It's a very seventies car with That's, a very that is nineteen seventies American ingenuity right there. Right there. So when he pushes, it get, his bumper gets caught, and it's at that point when the guy gets out of the car to have like a hissy fit be upset that he looks through the tunnel and if we're keeping track of pissy fits at this point in the movie like i don't know what eight guys had a rough day <laughs> <laughs> i'll give him as much as he wants <laughs> and to be to be fair the the bus driver was kind of belligerently like ah oh, let's just do this even yeah, though it's come clearly on, not gonna work out for your car it's like and let's he just... just let the kids sit on the hood while he was asking for help those yeah. kids Oh yeah. man, those were some. Oh man, those are our parents. Yeah, and they they fucked everything up for everybody. Well, now it all makes sense. Now I see where it started. It's just it's just our parents and school bus drivers not getting anywhere. Yep. Actually, we probably would have been better off. They just stayed in that desert. And they just got... stayed right there. So when the bumper gets caught, he gets out. And he looks through the tunnel and he sees the satanic truck just waiting for him. He sees the truck. And it's this perfect shot of a tunnel and a truck. That It's a shot of a uh, tunnel of a truck through like the door of a laundromat. And it's yeah, so yeah, it's creepy because when they make eye contact, when oh, Dennis yeah. makes eye contact with the truck, mm-hmm. the lights turn on. Mr. Yeah. And it's like, I definitely see you. It's that weird thing of when your camera is in sunlight and you got a long lens, but you're shooting something dark. It's like it's dark, but in a very pronounced way. It's like the dark is separate from just if it was a shot in darkness. It's just, it's almost like a pastel. It's of, a clever shot. It's Oh, it's great. It's like a pastel of darkness and then the truck at the end. It's like it's like it's like people. We gotta watch this uh, this kid Steven. Yeah, capital he, S, he capital might, T, capital even Spielberg. Spielberg. He he might be going places. Uh, so that happens. Who knows? He might have a hit on his hands. So he freaks out. He tells yep. the driver, "Hey, that truck driver's been trying to kill me. We gotta get out of here right now. When I tell you, you get in my car and you try to back my car out, and I'm gonna jump on top. I'm gonna I'm gonna jig it out. And in the truck, the truck, the satanic truck starts slowly moving through the tunnel towards yeah. them. Yeah, there's there's all those close up shots of his exhaust pipe just shooting and black smoke into the. And I, I think it's important to note that at this point in the film, like it's it's done a very good job of establishing that like to most of the people that Mister Man is encountering, he looks like a crazy person. Yeah, he, no one has seen this happen to him with the truck yet. Yeah, there's there's no reason for anyone to be like, oh yeah, well clearly you're a good, like reasonable, honest man, and this truck has a vendetta against you and has put your life in danger. No, yeah, they're just like you're, you all right, man? That story makes perfect sense, sir. Thank you for explaining it so well. It's it's just that. So he freaks out. He gets in the car. He takes off the tunnel. The truck comes around and spins around, and the truck helps the school bus. Uh huh. Making him we- look like a. Making like him dick. look like oh a goddamn God. foolish person. He's a crazy guy, and he takes off, and we're back in pursuit. And not only that, but the truck just looks like the nice guy who saved the day. Yeah. What a nice truck driver, we assume. That's a good thing he happened along, because that crazy man wasn't helping anything. He was just mouthing off and looked like he was about to hurt the children. I know. Yeah, I, yeah. He, he legit chases the children for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, oh he's yeah, just, he's so sick of the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he they, when he sees the truck, he he starts to chase the children around with his glorious mustache. Uh, and if you saw that without context, see that's why Tom Selleck didn't do the movie. He read that scene. He's like, I'm not chasing children. They're like, Look, we will find Dennis yes. Weaver if we fucking it's like, have look. To the to Me Too movie. movement is decades away. He's like, I, I don't care. This is gonna catch up to me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the train scene, I believe, coming up next after that. I'm pretty sure it's, it is. It doesn't matter if we don't get it. Oh, yeah, annoying. train time. Yeah, train time. Train, train. And by that, we mean he falls asleep next to the railroad tracks and then gets woken up by a train passing. It makes you uh, jump. Yeah, it's the first tra- is this the first train scene, then? There's but, another train scene. But it's uh, but like like it, the way that it's shot, like it, 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 it's misdirection. You think it's going to be the, the, the truck found him or something, but it's just a train. And then he, he has like one of those, like, oh, oh man. You got me, movie. Like, he has one of those, like, laughs yeah. to himself in his car. He thinks he's hiding from the truck, and he falls asleep, and he it's wakes cute. up to hear the train just flying by. And he, he thought, like, like, he just thought he was dead. It's insane. He thought it was the truck. Yeah. But I think after this, or at some point, there's another train scene where he pulls up to train tracks, and the arm comes down because a train's passing. 
and he's just there and he's just collecting his thoughts. All of a sudden, the satanic truck is right behind him and starts pushing his car oh, yeah. closer to the oncoming train. Oh, yeah, that's where yeah. that one was nuts. For a second, I was like, well, what another train scene? Like, is there a part where, like, he's riding on top of a train and the truck's, like, driving, chasing him down the train? Like, they're on top of the train. And the tra- guy and the truck have a <laughs> fight on top of a train. <laughs> Like, going through a tunnel. <laughs> it actually, this scene is the first. Because that does sound like some Jason Statham rock shit. This this scene is the first time that the this. I think it's the only time the truck is just right behind him all of a sudden. All the other ones, Spielberg kind of does this thing where you see the truck in the distance. Either the guy sees it mm-hmm. or the audience sees it, but yeah. someone's aware the truck is off in the distance. And, and it it's makes it a close. point to show how much bigger the truck is too. Yeah. they do that all the time. Yeah, in it's movie. just. Like the lowest of angles. But it's, the, the truck is a powerful presence. The train is the only... But Well, actually, the two train scenes are the only jump scares in this movie. The only kind of cheap jump scares in this movie is yeah. when the... And I wouldn't call them cheap necessarily because they're so it, few. They're so few. Jump scares are gimmicky. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with a gimmick if you're honest about it. But some people confuse gimmicky with being cheap. Mainly because it's a it's an idea that's existed so long as so many people know Exactly. About it. But there's only two of them in this whole movie. Yeah, and this they, is one of them because the truck is just there. You do not see it in the distance. He just looks in his rear view. It sneaks movie, up bam, on him. Truck. It sneaks up on him. It's starts, a sneaky truck. Starts pushing him into the train. It's a, it's a sneaky truck. Pushing yeah. him into the train. Just pushing him in the train. Slowly. And... Uh, and then the train passes and he takes off and we're back to another chase, right? Back to the chase. So many chases and so many back and forth and there's just like, and it's perfect with, there's several times where the truck just kind of shows up somewhere ahead of the driver and he doesn't expect it. He does, Spielberg doesn't overdo that. It's, you, you would think it would be ridiculous if he did it too many times because I'm thinking about it logically. How often is someone going to do that? Well, he only had but, time to do it so many times. He made yeah. the movie in 12 days. Yeah, but he, he was really smart with when it came out of these, oh, the truck's ahead of me type things, and it they work every single time because there's one towards the end where it's like just after all this crazy stuff and he thinks he got away, this truck is just still up in the thing. It's that scene where Dennis Weaver, where he... He does this crazy stuntman stop where, like, he's just driving down the road. It's, like, the side of a mountain, and he hits his brakes, and he does that power slide that, like, blocks two lanes. It's, like, perfectly the side of the car, and he looks, and the – oh, that's right. There was, a, there, was a, there was a zoom lens, and it pans back, and you see the underneath the truck. So like the cameras by the truck. Oh yeah, and yeah. And, and, and the, 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 the reveal is the, yeah. the reveal the is truck. the tire of the truck. Yeah, yeah, it's like the tire and like the undercarriage of like the trailer, and you're like, shit, the truck's still there. And it's parked off, kind of on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does this thing where he tries to take off for it, and when he tries to almost get it, the truck pulls the truck out. Truck stops just, him. The truck stops him and pulls out just far enough to block his view. The truck is challenging him, and then like so he pulls back and he does that thing where he gets out of the car. And he starts running towards the truck, and then of course the truck pulls on, doesn't let him catch up to the truck. Oh yeah, and yeah. that's an interesting like aspect of it to me is that like this guy refuses to to meet him. This guy refuses to see him face to face. The only situation that he wants to play this game in is when he has the power, i.e., he's in the bigger car. That's that's the only yeah. way he's willing to to have this to, to to have this go down is with him in the car. He, and he doesn't want to take out you not in a car. Get in your car. But my car is still bigger than yours. He wants it on his terms. He will never have a conversation with this guy. He's just like, no, this, never. Is, this is my power position. I won't compromise it. It's a power a big play. ass truck. Yeah, it's just straight up a power play. So then also, isn't that where like the old couple comes by and want to have no part of that? Oh, and he, he, oh yeah. Yeah, he pretty much kills them. Yeah. <laughs> or almost does. Um, he's just like, Mister, can you drive ahead of that truck and call the police? And 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 the old guy's just like, Hey, what's going on? It's like, you're a crazy person. What are you talking about? And they, because they what he's truck. talking about sounds crazy. And the, the the his wife is just like, Don't stop for him. It's like that couple at the end of uh, Back to the Future. No, not the back. Like when Marty first goes back in time, and he's wearing the like weird hazmat space suit, and he tries to stop a car, and he talks to the old guy, and he's like, Hey, Mister, can you help me? And his wife's like, No, <laughs> don't keep driving. That's that scene. That little part of Back to the Future is that in three minutes. Yep. Just, just like this is a bad idea. Just, just go like, Mister, please help me. And there's like, just I don't want go. no part of this, son. And like the wife's like, just drive. It's ridiculous. And they do, but then the guys, but then the truck is just like, oh well, I can't let you get away. You know too much. Yeah, but then, then what happens? They actually let him get away, don't they? Uh, yeah. They no, they turn away. around. Yeah. They turn around. And they turn yeah, around and go like the other one. It's the first time that the truck. 
does something in front of someone who's not Dennis Weaver. It's the first time the truck has done something. It won't be the last. And it does won't something. be the last. Yeah. Does, does something to someone besides yeah, Dennis Weaver. Yeah, does something to someone besides Dennis Weaver who could actually say, okay, yeah, that guy's not totally crazy. It's like, nope, it's nope the truck. And that's how the movie lets you know um, another part of the rule that the, of the game he's playing. It's like, don't talk to anyone or else they are dead too. Dennis Weaver in the truck. This is you. This is not me. even snakes. I knew it was them. Oh man, we got to get to the snakes. Oh god, oh, snakes. Man. That's right. Snakes. Oh, that's what that's what happens. That's what happens. The, the, the guy guy gets into the truck or, or or the or the guy in the truck, he you know like he the, after they resolve that situation, he waves the he waves Mr. Man on and so he gets into his car and just peels out, takes off down the road and uh that's that's where they end up. Is he ends up finding himself on that little snake farm because yeah. it's like a gas station snake farm, and that's whenever we got that goddamn piece of shit joke that you like to make about about <laughs> as much as much Ethel as you could fit in there. Well, long as Ethel doesn't mind, you mother- I can't. Masterpiece alert, ladies and gentlemen. We have just gone over a masterpiece of comedy. Brace yourselves for th- for the shock of humor. Oh my god! I got worked up. I got a little worked up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Cause Liz like crazy I don't because remember what you're talking they, about. They walk up and they say, uh, "Can you fill me up with Ethel?" And they're like, oh, "As long as that's Ethel a does. different scene." Oh, no, I know it is. It. No, but, 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 but he brought it up. He brought it up. So so this scene while happening. while this scene happens. But there's a good reason we're bringing it up because we forgot to talk about the radiator hose. Oh yeah, the oh radiator hose. God. Oh my god. The so, biggest piece of foreshadowing in the movie, and we didn't talk about it at all. Okay, let's talk about the reptile farm, what happens, then we talk about the radiator hose. I feel like that's a fair order to go in. Well, we're okay. pretty much at that part of the movie, but we totally skipped the radiator hose we part. Did. So okay. we should probably just go back and talk about okay. that for a second. So the radiator hose, when he pulls in the gas station early on in the movie, um, old school 70s gas station, guy pumps gas for him and checks under the hood. He says, oh, it looks like you need a new radiator hose. And Dennis a Weaver's, recurring theme of paranoia in the movie, he doesn't trust the mechanic. He doesn't trust the mechanic. And Dennis Weaver's like, oh, yeah, where have I heard that one before? Because, of course, like... People are going to tell you to need a new radiator hose when you st- when it's a tiny little nowhere gas station trying to get a little bit more money out of you. But he does. He tells the guy he's fine. He'll replace it later. And yeah, not he, today. I'll do it another I'll day. I'll do it another day. And he learns to regret it some point later in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much like right after the... Uh the big thing, after the thing snakes. that we're talking the about, because because cool. that's what happens. He pull like like he pulls off because he sees like that it's a thing, and that he should be able to find a phone. That's really what he's looking for. He's looking for a phone. Yeah, and he finds a phone at a reptile farm because you know how all reptiles farms have like. Oh, phones. it was it was California he, in the seventies. All reptile course, farms. Of course, had, it was, it was state law. All, Cal- all California reptile farms have to have phone booths in the seventies. California and their laws. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he goes to this phone booth and this is a scene solely for tension it serves no plot at all but it's beautiful so yeah. it's magnificent he goes and this weaver goes to call the police and try to figure out what's going on the guy was cool to lay off him until he got into the phone booth yeah that's yeah. what started it that was that's what was like oh well then so the guy the, the truck has been leaving him alone especially around civilians and there's this lady walking around saying this is my reptile farm here i am with spiders and snakes and whatnot and so he goes to call, and this in-camera shot, this is not special effects at all, Dennis Weaver, the protagonist, the main actor of the movie, is in the phone booth calling the police. In the background comes the truck. And I'll be damned if they didn't film that with the truck running really close to the phone booth. Oh, yeah, dude. It's with like Dennis Weaver, our protagonist, not inside. a stuntman. Dennis not Weaver, a stuntman, but the actual actor. Getting Fucking out of the Magnum way. P.I. just standing right there in the phone booth. I mean, their budget was 450000 420 of that was just to pay Dennis Weaver. Most of this, this is his power play. And then this most of the rest of it went towards gas. It was the gas <laughs> crisis in the 70s. <laughs> but, like, it's just that, like, it's a long shot of him standing, and it, you don't think anything's going to happen. And it's weird when something, it's not, they, this camera doesn't cut. The movie doesn't go to something else. It's just in shot. All of a sudden, this shot is important. Because the truck's right behind him, and then they cut, and the guy, the, the guy jumps at Dennis Weaver. Jumps out, he dodges the, a train, a truck. The truck. He he proceeds to run around the farm, and the truck's taking out all the shit. Yeah, he's like running over all these snake cages. And, and now he stuff. has to avoid a rattlesnake. It's just like like snakes. I've got I've got a truck trying to kill me, and now there's snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? 
Oh, yeah. Foreshadowing. I mean, I thought they were dead. <laughs> so that happens, then the lady's like, my snakes, my babies. And then just... Uh, the, yeah, the she cer- clearly doesn't have a lot going Not on. Not really. Her and her snakes and her spiders. And the truck driver yeah. circles. And yeah, I know. I mean, I like and snakes, but... And, uh, he had and a tarantula d- on his leg. Oh, yeah, yeah, he had a white tarantula off his leg. Yeah. And then he gets in the car and takes off. And this is where we start to get into like the end of all of these shenanigans. Yeah, at this point, the uh, at this point, the truck is just like, I don't get it. Usually, like, you're dead by now. <laughs> so he's he's just like throwing everything he can at the wall to try to kill this guy. And this is when the radiator hose starts oh, to go. Oh, right this before the, uh, right wait, before wait. the radiator hose, um, the highway has like a detour sign, and he has to take a detour, and he takes like a hard turn. I don't know. It's while he's taking the detour, but he makes a hard turn right, and it's the first time we see blood because he like hits his head or something or bites his tongue, and oh, his yeah. mouth oh, yeah. has blood in it's his mouth yeah. now. It's very because you can feel the tension rising, um, and it's it's pretty great. So it's yeah. the first time blood is drawn. That's kind when his of. radiator hoses started going. He's going uphill, and he notices his. Uh, he thinks he's clever because he's going uphill, and he's like, "Haha, I have the upper hand." Because he would. Because I can go uphill faster than you, you big heavy truck. Mm. Take that, Bowser. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid Bowser. Stupid <laughs> fucking blue shell. Black Yoshi for but the win. But then he sees his <laughs> RPMs falling, and he's like, oh, shh. But that's then, when... Then you hear a big pop sound. And that's when the radiator And hose Houston, goes. we have a problem. It's a, it goes. The radiator hose goes. He doesn't know what to do. He freaks out. He's like, oh, God, I can't stop. I'm still in the car. This is Duel. He's, I he's can't just, stop this yeah. part through Duel. <laughs> the the rest of Duel has to happen. The movie hasn't ended yet. I can't <laughs> stop. So Wait. like, so he, he, he just pretty much just has to hope that his car can make it over the hill, which like he, his, just, his, his odometer is just dropping and dropping. He's slowing down, but the truck sees what's happening. The truck smells blood. Like a shark? And we just saw blood drawn for the first time earlier in the movie. Maybe yeah. that wasn't an accident. Yeah. But the truck, oh, the the truck kind of sm- kind of smells blood because he sees that the car is suffering. And it's just like, all right, I'm going to play with you for a second. So he hangs right. back. He he's, like a, he's like a cat. He's watching this mouse, this wounded mouse. He's a predator who's playing with his prey before he kills it. And that's, that's what he thinks he is. But Dennis Weaver is at the top of the hill. Because, you know, he thought he could. And things are about to turn up. Or I guess down, down for him in this case for the good. But it's going to be a good thing that it goes down because radiator hoses and seventies cars. Who yeah. cares when you have neutral? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what happened is the Fonz came in at some point and just went <laughs> on, <laughs> on the car we and then it's like, making hey. Duel, hey. <laughs> hey. So because so he, he goes downhill and builds up speed, and then the next by by the by the time it comes back around again, that that should be an issue again. It's just fixed. It's just no longer a problem. Yeah, by by car magic, he turns the car on going downhill, and it's ridiculous, and well, it works somehow. Well, right? I think I think that the answer is that this man is actually Rick Sanchez, and he has he has already designed like a box of people that are gonna keep his engine running no matter what. Okay, you're you're baiting me for a Rick and Morty bit, and I'm not gonna fall for it. He's not falling for it. Not uh, doing uh, it. D- 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 Mor- Morty, this is not the first time that this has happened. Morty, I. D- the semi oh, truck driver like, in the 70s. Oh, uh, jeez. You're always trying to do a bit, and it never works. And th- he no, fell that, for it. They made, they made a movie about it, Rick. They, they made a movie about it, Morty. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm going to. I'm. This is not going to end well. So, what he does is he takes his suitcase for that meeting in Bakersfield. Remember, he was going to a meeting in Bakersfield? He is not probably Baking. going to And the I radio. think it's the first time that you see his name. I think it says Daniel on it. Oh, so that's the first time you, you get his name. David Mann. The silent this antagonist. This movie's got no time for names. <laughs> we got duel to have. <laughs> but don't. It's got to have another car scene. He's racing down. He takes his suitcase. First time you get his name. Silent protagonist and silent antagonist. I mean, not unnamed. Sorry, that's what I meant. Unnamed. Like, Un- antagonist yeah. is, is We silent. now have a name for the protagonist. We never get a name uh, for the, the antagonist. The protagonist actually won't stop bitching whenever he opens his mouth. Um, but they're racing. He's downhill. got a lot going on, man. He has a, a meeting in Bakersfield. Like he's he's, he's going to be late for his meeting. Things aren't great at home, and now this truck driver wants to kill him. His this guy is having a day. His he's kids are have to go and fight with his neighbor. Later. And he has a broken radiator hose. And a broken. He's got to fix his car. <laughs> so Dennis Weaver is racing down. He is taking his suitcase. He is putting it. He he jams it on the gas and looks behind him. This truck is like closing in on him, and you get the sense at this point that 
you guys were talking about the blood that this truck is ready to feast. Like it's it's done playing around. It's gonna kill him now. It's a wounded animal, and he can't wait to kill that shit. He it. is gonna end his life. So he looks back, and at the right moment, dishes the car. Car goes careening on the side of a cliff. Uh, truck driver. This is the oh, this is the only time in the whole movie the truck is not supernatural to me. Is in this scene, the it's, truck driver yeah. shows panic. As he realizes he's going way too, you don't see the truck driver. You see his but arm, but you see his hands shift. working. Yeah, he's obviously panicked, trying to get it in reverse or trying to get into different gears. So trying to slow, slow down. The, yeah, trying to slow the truck down, and he's like Bowser is heavy. He's hard to stop. Yep, he is going right over the side, and he bumps over the side. He does not go as fast as the car. He kind of hits the side. The the, the but that, that well, car that car is done. That car is yeah, done. That, that beautiful that beautiful gone. that beautiful car is just. Done. Hey man, the kids had already dented the hood. That car was. It's you know, true. It's very true. Yeah. It and then he ruined. goes over. I mean, it's a slow motion shot of a truck going over. But dear God, it's the most beautiful slow motion I've ever seen. It's like of a just, truck on the side of a cliff. You keep waiting for the truck to blow up, and it doesn't blow but up. Spoiler alert: It doesn't blow up. And the only thing that is on fire is the car when it hits the yeah. truck. That that sets on fire, but the, the truck, truck, truck that says the truck that says flammable twice. 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 Never catches on flames. <laughs> it's so it's so intense. It's this flammable twice on the back end of it. <laughs> Apparently, that entire tanker was empty because the truck does not blow up whatsoever. And I I read this somewhere when uh the I don't know what uh channel Spielberg made it for, but either the network well, suits. Well, you have three options. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the three. Either the network suits or the affiliates talking to the network suits were upset that the truck did not explode after it crashed on the end. So, so they want, instead of having this like drawn out scene of a truck cla- crashing in slow motion, which I think is like crazy brilliant. I think it just looks really neat to have it, to watch it. Because with explosions, it's just like you're watching one thing happen. When you're watching a truck fall over a cliff, especially parts of it in slow motion, you're watching just every little bit of damage happen to this monster. And it's just... It, you kind of start to fully understand the weight of what you just watched. You're like after like, an oh, hour, there, there there is a person in that truck. Yeah. After an hour of watching the supernatural beast, it's just a truck now. But Spielberg was told we want we want you to go back and shoot it exploding. And Spielberg, this kid's like early twenties. He's only made a couple TV movies. Probably an episode of Night Gallery. Spielberg said no. This kid's like he's a child pretty much, and he doesn't have a lot of credit to his name. And when the network said, we want you to change the ending or we'll give you more money, we will give you more money to go shoot more of this movie that you shot in 12 days that you miraculously pulled off by a feat of like just being clever. Go back and shoot the ending when the truck explodes. Spielberg said, no, I'm not doing it. I, if you want to shoot it, go get someone else to shoot it. I will not be the person there shooting the sh- hmm. shot of the truck exploding. You know, that's bold and everything, but that kid's never going to work again. Yeah, he's career Yeah, we've is... never heard from Steven Spielberg again. <laughs> that was the end of his career. But, but hey, at least we got Duel out of him. Yeah, that and, was in one movie. And that was it. That's pretty much how it ends. Um, the like like that beautiful red tr- that beautiful red car is ruined. It's just it's just gone off the cliff with the truck. Um, the truck is gone. The guy is dead. You get a shot of the inside of the cab with blood dripping. Oh, there's a fan inside the cab of the truck, and, and it's, it's still just, going. It's still going. You get some wheels spinning as it just lays there dormant. And, and then Dennis Weaver just standing at the top of the cliff. Sits down on the like, cliff, and he's just, yeah. just laughing to himself because he can't really believe what's happened. He's had a day. It's over. He doesn't know what he's going to do. And, and you know what's going to happen That's a good now? question. What is he going to do? It's 1970. It doesn't matter. What credits roll. What is he going to do? The credits roll. The credits the roll. And it's very 1970s credits. It looks really cool. Like it's I, just, really I, lo- neat. I like the font and the layout and everything. It's very oh, 1970s. And there's a sunset with a silhouette in front. The credits rolling. Yeah, down. when I, I say this guy has a day, I mean, it's a day. He starts off early. And yeah, this whole thing takes place over the course of one afternoon. The uh, ending kind of feels to me a lot. I, I say this every time I watch it. The ending feels to me like Jaws. Um, the ending of Jaws. Just just not, not anything else like necessarily about the whole movie. There's a lot of superficial comparisons you can make, but like yeah. just the ending, I think like the creature is dead. Like at the end of Jaws, the creature floats down to the sea with its bloodied head and they swim off on that driftwood back towards shore. And it's kind of like, hey, the creature is done. This movie is over. And Duel is the same way. It's like you see the guy there. He's clearly like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm just going to sit here. But the movie's like, all right, we're done now. Yeah, it's like that brief moment of reflection for every 
protagonist. Yeah. Right well, after I, the I think after the credits got done rolling, that guy began his career as a courier in the Mojave. Yeah. I have a few things that I really liked as the as an audience of this. Like, so the truck died. It's dead and dusty, and it's done. But then the only piece of liquid we see from the the truck's end is like this dark oil oh, yeah. that like drips oh, yeah. from the back of the truck somewhere. Um, another really cool thing about this movie that I, I enjoyed was um, there wasn't a lot of music in it. There was so much rumbling from the truck, and that my sound bar is is dead, so it was super boomy. But um, besides, oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah. and most of the music that you do here is on the radio. Yeah, we first hear music in the radio, and then we don't hear anything for a would while. You, we just would you hear, call it accidental um, music? The busted sound bar uh, and the grumbling of the truck, and then and then about eighteen minutes in, we we first hear. Uh, music in the background and it's just shrill orchestra um like high strings making the shrieky well, sound would you, would you call it accidental music at all incidental music incidental music excuse me would you call it incidental it's just it solely serves like a very emotional purpose in that specific sense for that moment and nothing else yes i think so i okay. think most of it i don't i don't remember hearing any themes you know, there's no themes. There's no themes. Yeah. You know, Jurassic it, Park yeah. has th- has amazing yeah. themes. Jaws it's, has it's, themes. It's Jaws very themes. it's very uh, uh, John Carpenter like kind. Mm-hmm. Of I heard that some sense. like sub sub themes. I would think, but I feel like the music in general was very um, jagged and mm-hmm. and supposed to reflect his emotions. And yeah. the further on we got in the in the music, it got very very jagged. More, More frantic. frantic. Yes. Dual gets compared to Jaws a lot, and that's not fair. <laughs> But mainly because it's seventy Spielberg and it has a giant antagonist that's like horrifying. But that's not fair to call it similar to Jaws because they work in two completely different ways. Jaws has that whole thing of I don't ever show you the threat and the danger. You just see the result of it for most of the movie. You just see the horror. And this you kinda earn the you're, horror. You're staring right at the truck for most of the movie. Yeah, you you know exactly what it looks like. You just don't know who it is. There's still we a don't little know bit of mystery. driving the truck. And I maybe that's it. Maybe but that truck is right there. Maybe that's what carries it. Is that the you see the truck, but you don't see the driver. You don't know who it is. Maybe it's the fact that it's still a little bit of mystery compared to Jaws, which is shrouded in mystery. That most of this comparing comes comparison comes from. Well, well, there's a difference there. You see, that truck looked badass, so they could show that truck on camera all day. True. That mechanical shark looked like shit, so they wanted to show it as little as possible. And it kept breaking down, so I'm assuming, like Spielberg, I'm gonna guess, and this is totally an assumption. If I'm wrong, uh, hit us up on the social medias and tell me how wrong I am. Yep, yell at us. They totally will. The Don't internet hold will. Back. Don't hold back. But. M- that's not how people are planned Jaws. So maybe it, if if the shark looked halfway decent and didn't like be not working, if the if the shark worked, Jaws probably looked more like Duel and totally different. I don't know. I got off on a tangent, but still, it's it's like it's an interesting comparison. People compare Duel to Jaws, but I don't feel like it's exactly fair. And the last thing I have to say about this movie, and this is it's uh, to give the whole group credit because uh, we all said this at different moments in the movie. This is definitely um, a Spielberg film you watch that is the most like you are really into Hitchcock right now. Yeah, Hitchcock. Yeah. And we didn't you talk are about you are just trying to imitate a lot of his. Be- not you know that's not, not a, in a bad way. In a good way. In a in a good good way. It was a, it was the a very music, good too. imitation. Definitely. Psycho. A lot of psycho influences yeah. in yes. the movie. The birds influences. I mean, just. Thriller tension buildup in general, you know, like seeing a threat, mm-hmm. like you do in the well, the the thing the the thing I got from the birds is like you see the birds motionless in that movie, and you have to like walk past them, and then they freak out, and that's the that's yeah. what kind of reminds me about. Oh uh, yeah, totally. Is like yeah. you see the truck, and it's just do it. That's what the everyone else just sees a truck. That's why they think the guy Dennis mm-hmm. Weaver is crazy. They're like it's just a truck being a maybe he's taking a nap. That's why he stopped by the side of the road, but really. The yeah, there's a, million, cross, there's a million ways to explain why that truck is sitting there. There's only one way to explain how you're acting right now. You're crazy. All right. That's it. That's Duel. I love this movie so damn much. Yeah, That's Steven as most Spielberg. I it's guess great. I really like this one. Uh, check us out on social medias. Listen to uh, past episodes. Check out The Minute with Sam and a guest where he talks about uh, current things of the, of the day, current events of the day, re- re- referencing movie news most of the time. So that's it for Movie Night Autopsy this week. As always, I'm Chad. I'm Grace. I'm Asher. And I'm Sam. Thank you so much for listening. 
What's up, crew? If you got any idea of what you would like for us to talk about on the minute or on Movie Night Autopsy podcast, hit us up on the social medias. You can hit us up on Twitter at movie underscore autopsy. Check us out on Facebook at Movie Night Autopsy. Always feel free to email us contact at movie night autopsy.com.